Not all instrument approaches end in a landing. Many times you'll need to execute a missed approach and continue flying under IFR until you're cleared for another approach or to another airport. Let's look at a real-world scenario of how to execute it and how ATC will often handle it. We're deep in the clouds on short final for runway 31 on the ILS at Atlantic City. The decision altitude for this approach is 264 feet MSL. When we get to that altitude, if we can't see the runway or any visual cues that allow us to continue the approach, we need to execute a mist. A good thing to have in your mind when doing a mist approach is the five C's. Cram, climb, clean, cool, call. Let's go through it here. We arrive at 264 and can't make out the runway. We first cram the throttle, cram gently that is, to full power. We then set a climb attitude, pitched for a good climb speed. When we have a positive rate of climb, we clean the configuration, bringing flaps up and gear up if we have a retractable gear. We cool what we can now. That could mean setting carb heat to cold, it could mean opening cow flaps, it depends what you're flying. Finally, we call. We'll tell tower we're going missed. They'll say roger and tell us to contact Atlantic City Approach. With the five C's complete, we focus on flying the published mist, which we should have briefed earlier. This involves a straight out climb to 500, followed by a continued climbing right turn to 2000 feet and heading 130. Once we're comfortable with aviating, we can go to navigating. We can unsuspend the approach on our GPS so it sequences us to the mist approach procedure. Next, we can handle communicate. We contact Atlantic City Approach and tell them we've gone mist. It's also good practice to let them know the reason for the mist. In this case, we didn't gain visual of the runway. Atlantic City Approach will say Roger, say intentions. We should know this ahead of time. What do we want to do? The approach didn't work the first time because of the clouds. Could we try again? Maybe, if the reports are a ceiling close to minimums and we just perhaps got unlucky the first time. If we think it's unlikely we'll be able to get below minimums on the next approach, we could ask for a different approach that gets us lower. We did the ILS here, which gets us to 200 AGL. There's really no other approach available to us that could get us lower than that, so we might decide to fly to our alternate or somewhere else with higher ceilings. How about for this scenario, we decide to simply try again. We tell ATC we'd like vectors for another approach. They tell us to climb and maintain 2000 and to fly heading 030, vectors for another ILS approach. So very quickly, whatever our stated intentions are, we're typically taken off the published missed procedure. It's obviously important to fly it from the missed approach point, but always be ready for a new set of instructions depending on what's coming next. We'll want to reload the approach for vectors. While we're still in the climb, ATC will give us a turn to 130 degrees, putting us on a downwind leg to the approach course. We'll expect to stay on this course until we're out past Persty, the final approach fix, then get turned south to intercept the localizer. This is how a very run-of-the-mill missed approach and resequencing works in the real world. When you're practicing, you get used to doing the full missed approach procedure and hold, which is very important for skill building, but make sure you're working in some practice on these more real-world scenarios so you're prepared when this happens to you on a flight. Over 10,000 students have signed up for Flight Insight ground school courses and have become better pilots. Check out all the courses at the link here and in the description today.